Boy, do we have a video for you guys today. This is by far, and I mean by far, the best stage 25, probably the best auto team in general for the Sand Devil. Excited to show you about this team. It's just crazy, so let's get into it. What up team, it is Murder Inc. We are on the test server talking about this awesome new team here. First, as always, what are we gonna do to start off? We're gonna give a shout out to the person who made this incredible, incredible team. The person named Hell Sorcerer who posted in my Discord channel. So I'm going to give him a shout out and the Red Bull, which kept him alive while he was making that. Listen, I respect the hustle. I told him I've put countless hours into making teams for the Sand Devil, so I respect the grind. However, I am a monster drinker, so Red Bull, a little bit sus. But moving on, once again, huge shout out to this guy. Like I said, this team is nothing short of brilliant here so what's the team what are we going to be doing let's just dive into it we have duchess we have septimus we have quargan like who the lizard quargan we have rio and then husk who can we swap here what can be changed here so many different champions who do you need let's get that out of the way first because all of you guys are probably going to be interested as far as who do you really need for this? So as far as need goes, I haven't figured out a swap for Rio, which is kind of unfortunate. She is a void legendary. So there is going to be at least one thing on this team that can't be swapped. That's kind of whaley. The next one's going to be Duchess. Can someone be swapped for Duchess? Again, I haven't put too much thought into it because Duchess works so well and she's so unique because you're gonna kind of notice after seeing this run here, I mean, we're 45 seconds in and we're already, I mean, <laughs> look at the health, right? We're halfway through and we're 50 seconds in. So you have to be able to survive the A3 ability, which is called Beasting Swarm. Now who can do this? The only champion that can do this is a green affinity champion because they can't be crit. On top of that, you need pretty decent stats. Now she's in a stalwart gear. If you have stalwart and defiant, it's going to be much, much easier. Unfortunately, I don't have defiant gear on my account. That's good enough to do this, but 100% run rate, as we saw there, the health of Duchess did get low, but that's the lowest it's ever going to get. So I had tons of spare health to kind of play around with for sure here. Now, with all of that stuff being said, like I was mentioning before here, this is going to be a 100% win rate team. This is actually looking kind of fast, is it not? Am I about to get the fastest run yet? I didn't even see that many Brimstone. Granted, I was talking, so maybe there were some Brimstone procs, but this team has been consistently two minutes and 30 seconds. Despite all of my RNG, it's just always been two minutes and 30 seconds. And we just did it in two minutes okay this is quite the development i'm not sure actually i do know okay so thinking back i do know what was wrong i didn't have the settings properly when i tested this the first time the settings mean if you go to your i'll just show you guys really quickly in case you don't do this graphics quality low frame rate limit unlimited i had to set, i believe 60 or 30 which slows down the entire game but Hell Sorcerer, listen, this was a cool team before I knew it was doable in two minutes. Okay, so we have a team without a Chris yet on it that can be done in two minutes. So I showed you the champions. You want Brimstone, ideally on the, well, not the Duchess, that won't work out. You have to have Brimstone on the Septimus slot or the Husk slot. So you're doing damage while he is asleep here. So. This is blowing my mind. I'm kind of like scatterbrained. I had this video perfectly planned, but the fact that it just happened without lucky brimstone procs, unless I'm wrong and wasn't paying attention, in two minutes and two seconds. So, yeah, I don't know. I don't even have words right now. So, this is uh, kind of weird, but we're going to go over the team composition right now. And we're going to talk about the speed. So, 167 speed. What? Do you know how hard it is? Listen, if you're endgame, which you're going to be if you're doing stage 25, 
you don't understand how hard it is to gear a champion with 167 speed. I'm going to tell you right now. Because we've all been keeping speed gear. So like to find gear without speed is crazy. So 167 speed. If you're only running stalwart and you don't have defiant gear, this is just above the health you need to survive that A3. The defense doesn't matter. 4,600 is way too much. I must have some type of defense ring or whatever I have, but this is not optimal for sure. But I don't want to tell you a minimum amount of health to use. I can just tell you 124,000 is more health than you will need. If you're only using a stalwart gear set, if you are using stalwart and defiant as I was getting to earlier, I'm just going to make a guess here. If you test it, I'm sorry for the um, however much energy it is that you wasted, but 110,000, 100,000 health is probably good enough if you add the Defiant set because that set's broken OP. Next we have Rio, the hardest champion on this team to gear, 306 speed. Accuracy is way too high for this content. The health is important here, so you need to get 306 speed on Rio Bone Spear. Granted, Rio has a high base speed, so the speed's not an issue. The accuracy can be hard to get, but what's the good news? If you've been watching, I don't have War Master, and you cannot have War Master on any of these champions, which is kind of unfortunate because you have to remastery them, but what does that mean for Rio? We get the free mastery that gives you accuracy for Rio Bone Spear, making the accuracy check so much easier to hit. So that is why I'm over capped on accuracy gear here. As far as the set pieces that you want to use, it really doesn't matter. No one's probably going to be able to pull off stalwart gear. If you can get one defiant set, that's going to be really good for sure. So these are the stats here. Focus on HP, defense, speed, and accuracy as you can. Utilize those masteries as best you can as well. Getting the extra accuracy, the defense from the defense tree, the health and speed that you also get. And of course, I will go over masteries as well. Next, we have Septimus. Again, 179 speed. So easy to build. It definitely makes up for how hard Rio Bone Spear is to gear, but 179 speed is crazy. So you don't have to crit cap this guy. Based on the year I had, I went to 107. You only need 85 for stage 25. And as far as the health and defense goes, they just have to be able to survive the other AoEs outside of the A3 with Duchess Passive, which isn't that hard if they are strong affinity. Next is going to be Husk. Why do I favor Husk here? As we know, HP based enemy max health. Much easier for him to survive than other champions. Could you use Armager? Yes, he does do way less damage because he's harder to gear. So you have 73,000 health, 175 speed, crazy low. These speeds are flexible, by the way. I didn't use the exact speeds that I got on Discord for this team. I played around with it just a little bit, so they're going to be quite different. So if you're like one or two speed off in any direction, as long as you keep the order the same, it should work. If it doesn't, try to get as close as you can to the speeds I'm showing you here. So 175 speed once again for Husk, no special gear sets. And finally, Corgan the Crown. Like who? I've never heard of this guy. I mean, we all heard of this guy, but like... The fact that he's in this team is kind of crazy. There is a swap for this guy. That's why I didn't mention him before. It's just really Duchess and Rio who are, at the moment that I can think of, irreplaceable. So we have 95,000 health on this guy. At first, this was a huge problem. And you're going to know this because he can actually survive the AoE with this much health. So when I first built this team, I didn't give him a ring, didn't give him a neck, and I didn't give him a shield. And then he was dying to the AoE because if he gets weak hit, the team doesn't work. So 180 speed is going to be the consensus here. None of the other stats really matter. You want to give him HP and defense, but he's going to survive. Now the masteries on this champion are where things start to matter a little bit more. And before I talk about the swaps, the masteries, I want to go over the team comp so you guys understand how the team works kind of before we start talking about who you can swap for this. So everyone dies but Duchess, right? This is a must have, I guess, circumstance for this boss. Duchess revives, Rio uses her a billion debuffs. So now the counter goes from five to four. Now it goes to three, then a single hit from Septimus slot, and then another single hit from the 
husk slot. Now this is the key part here. This is why these champions are so specific and required. We cannot break this counter and boost his turn meter. That's the, I guess, condition of this team and why it works so well. So we have Duchess who applies her buff, doesn't hit the boss. Rio, the same thing. So that's the key thing. The boss gets a turn. Now it's Rio, just gonna hit him with the A1 ability. Back to Septimus, back to Husk. And we start the fight. Now there's one thing you're gonna notice very quickly. Let's see when we get to the part. We'll just put it on two speed for now. Okay, so block buff was used by Corgan. One turn cooldown. This prevents the Rage of Sands decrease speed and decrease accuracy from applying to these champions. However, you're going to notice something coming up shortly, unless we already passed it. Let me just have a quick look here. Hey, okay, so we did already pass it. I didn't stop it in time. Unlucky for me. This is where the one shot's going to happen. Bam. Okay, so we revive. We're going to place the buffs. Once again, look at the counter and notice why we're not waking this guy up. Hit him once here. Hit him once here. Now Husk is going to go. Now this is the important part once again. Duchess goes. And he's still asleep. And Real Bone Spear is going to go and heal the team. Why is this huge? Because she's clearing the destroyed health. This is why this team's so brilliant. You have double enemy max HP going on. You have a full clear of all of the... It's... I can't even explain how cool this team is. You have a full clear of the destroyed HP from the heal, which is needed. This comp wouldn't be possible if it weren't for that. And it just goes so smoothly. Like I said, 100% win rate. She didn't get weak hit there. 76,000 hit on that. And Duchess is nowhere near dying. So some of these champions are very competitive as far as their slot goes for sure. There's no denying that. But we also have Corgan here in the Guardian set on top of things, and he's taking the Bulwark Mastery. So what I was trying to show you that I we just missed and I wasn't able to stop it. The turn before this, so whatever turn that was, the A1 debuffs can be placed on Corgan as well as Rio. You know what the best part is? It doesn't matter. If it lands on them every single time, or it gets resisted every single time, the speeds are going to stay true and it's still 100%, which just goes to show you how much of an ultimate team this really, really is. Now, as far as lowering the speeds by five, I see this in pretty much every single video. It's not going to work with this team. Why isn't it going to work with this team? Because the 100% win rate condition is literally based on the fact that Duchess cannot be crit because she's strong affinity. So what does that mean? That means this is going to work on stage 25, 21, 18, 14, so on and so forth. Now, if you are willing to take it away from 100% chance, which means you're gonna have a 15% chance of getting crit every time the A3 happens, then you can for sure run this on 24, 23, 22, anything that isn't red, and it's still going to be a really fast and good team, but it's not gonna win all the time. If you get that unlucky crit here and there, it's pretty much over. Because unless you have Defiant, Stalwart, and an insane amount of health, I don't even think it's physically possible to build the amount of health you would need to survive a crit from that A3, but I don't wanna say impossible because I don't know. I haven't tested it out. I'm just saying based on the stage 25 numbers, there's just no way. So team's crazy. Now let's talk about who you can use instead of what, as well as the masteries for this champion. Okay, so we are at recently used champions. Let's look at the gear here and the masteries. The masteries is the most important part. So if you're building champions for this, they're gonna be unique to this, I'm telling you right now. As we can see from Septimus, he's not using anything that he would typically use. No offense tree, we're full defense support tree for survivability. Do we need it? Probably not. This is simply for 810 plus 3000, so just under 4000 extra health. It adds up. Could I have taken Helm Smasher if I needed it? Yeah. In fact, on Husk, I did take Helm Smasher because I wasn't able to crit damage cap this guy, which means this team can go even faster if I 
stop being lazy and put in some effort to gear this guy because the gear's a little bit underwhelming as far as the crit damage. If I can get the crit damage up, I built him with way too much health. I was trying to be safe so he doesn't die and I overcompensated way, way too much here. And once again, the issue with hitting 175 speed, it's a very low speed for accounts that usually keep gear with speed on it. It was just becoming a hassle, so I just sent it with 255 speed and ended up with a two minute kill. So kind of crazy, but masteries and gearing for Quargan. This is the important part here. Guardian set, the reaction doesn't matter. Masteries, bulwark. This ensures he dies and it takes stress off of Rio in case she gets crit. And this is what I was explaining about Rio Bone Spear, Master Hexer. This can make it run much faster for sure. If this extends to the next round after, you get more hits, which does more damage onto the boss, all good stuff. But the extra 50 accuracy, huge help, extra defense. This, All of this stuff is required, right? And the biggest thing to note for pretty much everyone's mastery is, I'll just keep going to Duchess here, just so you guys can see. No counter attacks, no turn meter increase, no speed increase no matter how you look at it you cannot add anything so check your accessories check your masteries check your gear sets make sure none of that can happen and it's just going to be a flawless run second good part contrary to the other teams i've shown you you can book all of these champions in fact you have to for this team everyone has to be booked there's no saving books here and there which is the good news so swaps who can you swap as mentioned you need a duchess you need a rio then everyone else is really good I think this is probably one of the best teams you can make. Yes, you can use a Krizia. I don't know how much faster it's going to be because the debuffs are on specific turns. And while a Krizia does have much better damage, if you're doing that damage outside of the defense down and weaken window, how good is it really? I've tested these champions with reflex gear and the run was a minute slower. Literally a minute slower with reflex gear. So I'm using the enemy max HPs more but they're not always in the defense on a weakened window because of the extra proc. So that kind of goes to show you how it would be with the Krizia. Is it going to be faster? Yes. Is it going to be as much faster as we see in other teams where a Krizia is swapped in and you're saving three minutes? No. This isn't going to be a 40 second team with the Krizia. I can guarantee it based on how the mechanics work. So with all of that good stuff out of the way here, again, do not run reflex. It's going to be worse and mess up your speed tune, especially on certain characters. You can use anyone you want for Septimus and Husk as long as it only hits once. One time or zero times, that's it. If you have a champion like, not that you would use Dracomorph, but Dracomorph, using four poisons, that's a four hit, you're gonna wake him up from the sleep and the team is not going to work. So it has to hit the boss one time and it can't be an ally attack, so you cannot use Farrakh in the fat. So those are the options you have as far as who you can use for the two other slots besides Septimus, as well as Husk. Next is Corgan. Corgan's OP, there's no doubt about it. Can you swap him out? Yes. Is he OP for this role? Also, yes. Who is the easiest swap? That's going to be Mausoleum Mage. Mausoleum Mage is a really good pair here. He's not green affinity, so you don't have to worry about him not dying if you gear him too well, which is a weird problem to have. I do understand that. But what do you lose? As expected, he's not strong affinity. So adding the sets like Guardian as well as Bulwark could prove a little bit more fatal to someone like Mausoleum Mage. Since he's going to be on equal affinity, he can get crit on top of anyone else getting crit. So it could potentially be a ton of incoming damage to Mausoleum Mage. Do I think he's bad? No, he's definitely going to be viable. If you want to play around with other champions that apply block debuff, you can do that. But they also cannot have more than a single hit on their A1 ability or they're going to wake the boss up. So someone I was thinking about was Blind Seer. Blind Seer in theory would work except for Blind Seer's A1. Way too many hits, it would wake up the boss. So we cannot use a champion like that. So that's the basis on how to gear these champions, the masteries, and who the viable swaps are going to be. So with that being said, after having fully explained all of this stuff, let's head back to stage 25 and just run this beautiful, beautiful team one more time without interruptions to see what the heck is going on. 
with this time of year. Can we get two minutes again? That's the real question. Maybe we get lucky and get some brimstone procs. Okay, none so far. It's just so cool to watch how clean this run kind of goes through here. So I want to count how many burst windows are just to see the max potential of brimstone procs here. So we had one so far. So it looks like every 30 seconds, so well, that's going to be four total, if I'm getting the timing right at four minutes. Let's have a look. Here's the AOE, non-credibility. We saw how healthy we were there. Resisted the defense down. That's definitely going to slow down the run significantly. Yeah, we did almost 100,000 less damage that time. So this definitely isn't going to be a speed clear run for sure. So there's that little bit of variance and there's that crit onto Rio. As we can see, she's not dead, right? Rio's not dead. That's the ability that could have killed her. And that's what makes it 100% win rate, right? So now that we got that out of the way, we're golden here. As far as blessings, you cannot use extra hit blessings as you would imagine with the hard cap on extra hits here. And the best blessings to use to make it easier for your enemy max health champions is going to be the one that reduces defense. My husk has it. Unfortunately, the other two have brimstone. It's not really doing anything for Duchess, so I probably should have taken that lower defense one on Duchess since Duchess is never hitting the boss when he gets slept to even be able to apply brimstone at all. So this one, unfortunately, isn't going to be a fast one. You can't win them all, you know? You, you just can't. So here's Feasting Swarm, another non-credibility, very healthy Duchess here, and okay, it's not going to be our best run by any means here. Wait a minute. How is this even possible? Things look like they're going so bad, but then it just comes out to be one second faster. I must be tripping. Do you know what I should do just for this video? I'm actually going to put in some effort and re-gear this guy, then we'll run it again and see if we can get an even faster time. All right, so we got the new gear we we're heading back in. I'm testing some sus stuff, okay? So if this fails, don't judge me. I lowered Duchess's health a little bit. Okay, we're fine so far. I gave Husk different speed, but a little bit more damage. So let's see how we're doing here. He's still not hitting the max amount, but we should be able to get there quickly, hopefully. So defense decreased there. I also gave Duchess the cruelty. And yes, double defense decreased there as well. So Husk should be hitting his prime numbers one turn earlier. Yeah, it should be one turn earlier. That's the good news at least. Okay, max defense has been decreased. Let's see if Duchess survives these because I did decrease her health. Okay, she she's still healthy. Okay, all the proper buffs. Defense down in Weekend, 490, 466, still not quite there. And I'm not sure about the time, but it's looking to be decently similar for sure. 50, okay, so we're closing it on a minute here. We just have to cycle through. Husk is HP. Uh, he doesn't look like he's in that much trouble. So everything's going fine. Are we on pace for our first sub two minute run? That's the question. Beast of Swarm, once again, perfectly healthy Duchess here. Yeah, I don't think this is possible because we still need a full rotation. 490, that's the first time he full hit there. Yeah, so it's definitely gonna take one more rotation. We did not get a single Brimstone. So two Brimstones and potentially it could have been dead on this turn, which would have been a minute and 30 seconds. Kind of crazy, hard. It's honestly really hard to rely on something like Brimstone procs because there's just too much RNG, even if it is a fully six star awakened champion. Yeah, so this is gonna be around the same time here. That's the lowest health she's ever been. Revive coming through here. 
this guy, this guy, two minutes and one second. So once again, no matter what I change, it's still going to fall in this cycle. Crazy impressive, no matter how you look at it. But I mean, look at Rio's damage. The fact that HP burns doing that much damage, maybe it'll spark some thoughts in other people's heads as far as what they can use when you're taking Sandell's Necropolis on any stage as far as the best damage dealing champions or supporting champions to pair along with enemy max health. So that's going to conclude this video. What a great team. What a great team. Huge shout out once again to Hell Sorcerer that made this team absolutely brilliant. I was so impressed when I saw this. I know I had to try it out. I'm blessed to have such a great community. So as always, guys, if you enjoyed this contest, smash that like button, subscribe to the notification bell, and I will see you all in my next upload.